In the world of Bitcoin mining, you won't find any helmets, axe picks, or seasoned men with dirty faces. This mining is done right from the comfort of your home, exclusively online, and you won't have to do anything but pay your electric bill once it's up and running. Anybody with a computer can technically mine higher-end computers and specialized computers to better. You basically have to just download something and run it and your computer makes money for you, basically. Making money at this young man's estimate, thousands of dollars in just about a year of work. Right now, I have about $3,000. All by downloading free software found online and maybe an upgrade in hardware depending on how serious you are. What was your investment again? $720. All of a sudden, your computer's new job will be to figure out complex math problems on the internet. And each time it does so, you'll make a bit of coin yourself. But slow down, first things first, you're probably asking yourself, what's a Bitcoin? People talk about where does the value from Bitcoin come from? A Bitcoin is a form of electronic currency. A network of teams out there on the internet, known as pools, will team up and have their computers try to tackle those complex math problems together. You can find a team as easily as a Google search or by going to bitminter.com. Each time your pool figures out the answer, they're all rewarded in portions of bitcoins, but only for the work they contribute. The more heavy lifting your computer is capable of doing, the more you're rewarded. My personal purchases include an ASIC, which is a small little box that is designed to do one thing, and that's mine Bitcoin. Very power efficient, very fast. Um, and I've also purchased video cards. Many online retailers are already accepting the digital coin for real purchases. Overstock.com is accepting it. You can also buy professional sports tickets with them, go on a trip to space on Virgin Galactic, find a date on OKCupid.com, or just cash out. Send it to a website called Coinbase, which I have my bank account hooked up to. Sell my coins through there, and then I can send that money into my bank account. While one way to get your digital hands on bitcoins is to buy them, the miners are the ones doing all the hard work and in finding them. It was a way to make money without actually doing anything. <laughs> but they are doing something, at least their computers are, and nothing is for free, not even bitcoins. Until you get the bill for your uh, 16 computers that are doing bitcoin mining in the basement. The video card I was using to mine wasn't very efficient and didn't get very many coins per day. So it wasn't paying for itself because you have to pay for power. It was actually drawing more power than money it was pulling in. These miners from across the globe are investing in faster hardware in hopes of finding more Bitcoins. Once they get, get their things pulled together, find what pool they want to mine on, they can really just hit start. I think the easy money is probably passed at this point. But every time a Bitcoin is found by these miners, the next coin will be more difficult to acquire. The math problem or barrier to the coin gets more complex, more time consuming. What they did was, is they say, we're going to create a computational problem that is increasingly hard to solve as we go along. I think the easy days of solving it are probably over with. To date, about 12 million of only 21 million Bitcoins total have been unearthed. Once they're all found, that's that. No more. The interesting thing about Bitcoin compared to the US dollar is it's deflationary. You can't print more Bitcoin. The first purchase ever using Bitcoins was for a pizza. One guy gave another guy X amount of Bitcoins to buy him this tasty delivery. So many coins were used for the transaction that today, that pizza would be valued at $750,000. That's what happens, you know, you buy a pizza and then, then all creation breaks loose. But without that purchase being made, it's hard to say how Bitcoins would have any perceived value. So how do Bitcoins make it in the world of a respected currency? The value in them is, is that it becomes increasingly more difficult to create them until you reach the limit of 21 million Bitcoins. That's the value. Initially, I thought I was going to sell it off pretty early on, pay for college stuff. But seeing as it's had a very, very good year in 2013, 
I think it has the potential of continuing that good trend. And that trend is going the right way for a couple of low-budget college students. While the Bitcoin was worth just pennies in early 2011 when they were given value thanks to a pizza, today a Bitcoin is worth $900. But as the value of the coin goes up and down along the way, depending on what the Bitcoin market says they're actually worth, miners are taking advantage of the price. Coin price fluctuates and you can just buy it at low, sell it at high. Because we don't have a strong monetary commodity base to this, you can have wild fluctuations in the value, which is probably one of the principal issues right now in terms of exchanging Bitcoins. But not everyone is convinced Bitcoins will have a foothold as a future oh, currency. Definitely. It will become legitimate when major markets that are involved in hard commodities and trading those commodities begin to denominate their transactions in Bitcoin. And with millions of dollars in Bitcoins that can be spent just floating around the internet, some believe it's just a matter of time before a high-tech hacker figures out how to take a piece of your action. And I will guarantee you, People are already trying to figure out how to do that. But that's not stopping these two young men with some fairly sophisticated hardware from getting back to the mines. Will it be accepted or is it just a fad that'll die out? If Bitcoin ends up failing, then everything I've put into it thus far is just lost. I can't recover that at all. It will work as long as people feel that there's value in it. I'm Eric Crest, Valley News Live.